Hey, pumpkin. Good morning. Good morning. Where are you going? Are you gonna take me on a walk? We gonna walk around the house? Whoop. Okay, you wanna go this way? You want me to throw you cookies, don't you? you get it? Okay, go get it. That wasn't much enthusiasm. Was it a bad throw? Sometimes you gotta get that throw just right. Okay, let's try again. Ready, pumpkin? Go get it. There we go. That was a better throw. Get that cookie. Hey, what's up garden friends? Jeff here. How's everybody doing? I hope you're good. I am great. It's a... I mean, yeah, I think it looks nice outside because it's a beautiful day. I think it, it looks beautiful. I'm picking up right where last week's vlog left off. So it's just the next morning from where I ended things. Still been raining. I think it's supposed to... I just stepped in a giant puddle. It's supposed to keep raining. For the rest of the day so can't really get much done out here it's supposed to be really kind of cloudy and cool all week i think tomorrow might be somewhat sunny i don't need to give the whole rundown on the forecast but i was going to say i would like to get at least one thing done out here today i would just feel better about life if i got a little bit of something achieved in the garden there's a toad in the pool you want to see the toad hey to okay all right deep diver never mind he's been out here for about a week i come out in the morning and he'll be sitting on the steps over there anyways while we're between storms i'm going to attempt to get this hole dug out a little bit more it's somewhat filled in this is where the queen palm goes the one that i'm pointing this way because it's this one right here that queen palm i just oh look who's back how you doing would feel better about having that in the ground before I start this garden bed cleanup and I enjoy the view out the window having that palm nearby especially at nighttime when I get the lights set up on it and it's really pretty all lit up and everything it has somewhat filled in from just you know the mulch and debris sometimes I'll take if I have an extra pot I'll stick those pots into those holes that are dug to put the tropicals in I didn't do that last fall you know, there was a lot going on uh, health wise so I was just happy to have even gotten the plants inside that was my main goal i need to find my shovel gosh i haven't used a shovel in such a long time like a really long time i don't even know where my shovel is I think the last time i did any digging was uh, june last year maybe i think i picked it up one time in like september and planted something really small anyways that's enough talking i want to get that palm in the ground before I start with the garden bed cleanup because I know when I get in here and I'm cutting back these Chinese fan palms and moving mulch and everything that more debris is just going to work its way into the hole so I figure I should go ahead dig that out plop the palm in there first and then work on the cleanup probably tomorrow I might I, don't know, I might need to give the mulch a little bit longer than that to dry out I don't want to have to dig and haul it all around while it's stopping wet but either way it needs to get done soon because it's, it's so trashy got to get this cleaned up it's kind of my objective for the week but you know how these vlogs go you know, when the things span like seven to ten days who knows what's going to happen i just kind of pick up the camera when i feel like talking and doing something i haven't even released today's video yet the video that comes out last saturday i need to get to work on that i have a few things left to touch up in the video description nobody cares i'm gonna go grab a shovel get this hole dug out and see if I can move this on my own I should be able to but it's also sopping wet because we got a lot of rain this morning this is the most ideal time to do this but I just figure this might be my only chance to get outside this morning and do anything because it's just supposed to keep raining all day oh there's the shovel okay I have used the shovel for little things like mixing potting soil I was referring to digging holes in the garden it's been a long time yeah it's not supposed to be there as a buddy What's that doing over there? Why is that laying on its side? I had to tip it over to get the palm out. Is there anything in there? Anything in that pot? Don't dig. No digging. I already got enough of a mess to clean up. All right, so there's the queen palm. It's, you know, it's cut up because I had to trim it back in order to get it into the garage. But I think that that is a pretty big improvement. It looks really nice from the kitchen through that window. Oh, it's so beautiful. So nice to have that view back. I didn't really feel any discomfort digging the hole i got it done fairly quickly i scooted this back so i ended up basically digging a whole new hole this was previously right around here it's right about where that hole was so i moved it back by about a foot because i remember last year not being really satisfied with the planting space that i had in front of it i the pot's pretty tall i couldn't get it down any further than that because there are some giant roots and some pipes you can see the pipe right there that run down so i dug it down as far as those pipes go 
This is how it was last year, and it was totally fine. Didn't matter. In fact, it was probably better just to make sure that there wasn't going to be a saturation or like a pool building up underneath it. So there's more space for drainage, essentially, is what I'm saying. I do have to make sure that when I get this bed cleaned up to get the soil mounted up around that pot in some way, shape, or form, because I don't want the surface area that's sticking up there to dry out like incredibly fast compared to what's going on down below. I don't think it's going to be a problem. Wasn't last year. This is typically what I do with my tropicals. I try and get them level down in there and usually I'll put a little bit of gravel or something at the very bottom of the hole and I'll loosen the bottom of the hole up so that water can drain freely out. But the soil that's in this bed is really nice. It's been worked for the last several years and it's really rich and drains really well. So that's not something I worry about as much over here. Uh, there haven't been any issues with water buildup or stagnation in the ground down there. It's always drained wonderfully. Now that I've done that, I really want to get in and finish cleaning up this bed, but everything's sopping wet. Well, I, it would make sense to just wait until tomorrow, but I just have got the urge to make this look nicer. But what's the point? I don't want to bring my pruners at me cutting through wet, gunky stuff and whatnot, so... This will do for now. That's good. Got something done. And also, it's Saturday. I don't need to work my butt off, but that's just how my brain works. Gotta remind myself that it's okay to rest. Anyways, yeah, I'll pick back up when things dry off. Probably tomorrow. Eh, we'll see. Doesn't really matter. Going with the flow. Yeah, we'll pick back up when things dry off some more. I need to get this basket handled, but it's wet. We've already been through this. You get it. <laughs> it's been a few hours and I just let him back out and he immediately, this dog's memory, is insane. I also remembered he's a Florida dog. He knows toads don't taste good, and I think that's why it's driving him crazy. You're not gonna hurt it, are you, buddy? I wouldn't just stand here and watch that happen. He knows to leave him. Oh, there's another one. Pools full of toads and frogs. That's fine. They're okay. But listen, I don't feel like listening to you squeal and whine. We both know you're not gonna do anything to it because you're a good boy, right, buddy? That's what all the squealing is about. You're resisting temptation. Good boy. Yeah, he remembers. Those don't taste good. He's not gonna eat it. He's just gonna stare at it and whine and scream relentlessly. Let's try and redirect that energy. I'm proud of him. I would applaud his restraint. You're, you get in there, what are you gonna do? It's not gonna taste good even if you're in the pool. You gotta leave it alone. So fixated on this one, he hasn't even noticed that there's literally right next to him, right next to him, there's another one. You gotta leave it alone. He's literally surrounded by toads. Huh? Huh? Yeah? Like it? I know it doesn't look centered, but when you stand right here in front of the window, that's pretty well centered. It's been really breezy too. It's been storming off and on. I think, yeah, that's kind of crooked. You know, it's weird that you can see things better through the camera than in person. Because when I pull the camera over to the side, it doesn't really look like it's leaning that much. But on the lens, it's like, that's real bad. It's not really bad, especially because the trunk isn't straight, so that doesn't help. I don't know, I wanna go out there in the mud and straighten that out. I think it stopped right, nope, it did not stop raining. Gonna have to make this really fast. I didn't even put my shoes on. I was just like, I'm gonna step out here so we can straighten this out. It's gonna take more than that, because I didn't really backfill this from this direction. That's gonna be better than nothing. This is so stupid. Why am I even doing this? It's raining and we have storms coming in tonight. Whatever. Oh, the Japanese maple bonsai is waking up and looking really nice. Look at all the fresh little flowers that are dangling off of here. Can you even see them? Okay, it's raining. We'll have to revisit all this later. You know, when it just keeps raining and raining and raining, you start to get antsy when you get outside and play, right, Toby? I want to play with the plants. Oh, that, that is better. Not a ton, but it's better. What you doing over there, Tobes? What you doing? Just standing there. Pondering the meaning of life, smelling for chipmunks and squirrels. That's probably, that's more likely what's happening there. Things have cleared up. It's getting nice out. I still have this basket here, which I know I said I wasn't going to bore anybody with redoing, but I changed my mind. Or redoing this basket, I should say. So I mentioned last week that the problem with this basket is that it's just too heavy. It just pulls on this hook up here, so I can't even have it hanging up. I grabbed a new one that is more shallow, and I had said I was gonna put some packing peanuts in the bottom and maybe put some plastic in there with some drainage holes, and I ended up getting a fair amount of questions in my DMs about that because of uh, the uh, issue out there that we know of about raising the saturation levels when you have something in the bottom of your pots for drainage. I'll just, we can do this right now and talk about it briefly. So here's that other basket. 
you can see it's nowhere near as deep as the other one. Putting these packing peanuts in the bottom probably really isn't even fully necessary, but I just, I don't want that hook to come falling off the house. A 20 inch container that holds a good amount of soil. And when that soil's wet, it's pretty heavy. So I'm only doing this to lighten the load. And it's not like I didn't go out and buy packing peanuts. Whenever I get a package in the mail that has packing peanuts in it, I hold on to them just because, you know, they're really bad for the environment. And I can usually put them to use in some way, shape or form when it comes to planters. Sometimes if I'm doing big succulent arrangements and something that's really, really tall and deep, which isn't appropriate for them, I'll fill with these sorts of things, right? Like plastic bottles. And yes, you do have to keep in mind that by having something in these containers, this is just a basket, so it's not gonna be quite the same, but that that does potentially raise the saturation level, meaning that wet layer of the bottom of the soil is going to be up higher than it would be if this wasn't here, may bring it closer in contact to the roots of the plants and potentially leading to issues with rot. I've got a little bit tongue tied there. So that's not something I have ever been concerned about with a coconut lined basket. These things dry really fast. I'll go ahead and forego putting plastic in here sometimes, which you'll probably see here in several weeks when I do my summer baskets. I will line them with just plastic and I'll make sure that there's lots of holes in the bottom. And that's just to slow down how quickly these dry out. Cause when these are out in the full sun during the summer when it's like 90 to 105, you never know, Fahrenheit outside, they, they dry very, very fast, even on drip. So just having them lined with something helps with that a lot. I don't think that that's something I actually need to worry about with a spring planter. We get a fair amount of precipitation this time of year. So that shouldn't really be an issue. So the only point here is just to lighten the loads. So that's just gonna be less soil in the bottom of this container. And since this is only going to be up for, I don't know, several weeks, really, because it's a spring container, then I'll have to take it apart because pansies just, they don't do well here in the heat. So they'll all have to be pulled apart and moved. This is just like a quick little temporary thing for some color. I'm not too concerned about the amount of soil that's in here, meaning how packed everything is together. That, that was my point there. So if I were doing this in a container that wasn't coconut, then it would just come down to having to be really, really careful with how I'm watering my plants and making sure that I'm not oversaturating everything since there is that raised saturation level in the bottom of the pots. Like I said, the coconut, not really concerned about that. The main thing is just making sure that everything gets put in here and it has enough soil around it that they can stay hydrated. But since it's only gonna be for a few weeks, I'm not gonna over baby this thing. I was actually really surprised that this ended up even being as heavy as it was because I used that coconut soil, which is typically pretty light and fluffy, but I don't know, when it gets wet, it, it is heavy, I suppose. I mean, clearly it was. I bent a wrought iron hook. I don't know, is the table not level? Is this sitting on something? Leaning forward, that's gonna throw things off. I'm not happy about that. I think I can just, that's fine. Just like lifting everything in clumps out of that other basket and setting them in here, I think that that will be okay. That At least that chunk worked out all right. Is it even in frame? Could you see it? All right, yeah, that was easy. Filling in as I go, wanna make sure that that's up high enough. Now, this is going much more smoothly than I thought it would. Things have rooted into the basket just enough that I'm able to grab them by big clumps and set them. Did I already say that? Who even knows what's happening now? It's popping right into place. This is simple. Yeah, that was really easy since the clumps had like just started to root together. Lifted right, I, no, I think I already said that, that this whole thing just popped back into this basket, no problem. I have some stock over here. See this, it's right there. Picked this up from the hardware store on last weekend's vlog, and I was thinking that that would look pretty to plant in here just to get a little bit more color. I just wanted a few other things in here with some height. Typically, I would think of stock as probably the centerpiece here, not the dianthus but it's one of those things where i'm like i want them both so i'm just gonna do it i don't care if i shouldn't since this is going to be coming apart and things are going to be used in the garden or in different arrangements in just a few weeks i figure it doesn't really matter however it does bother me that some of the stock is single petaled and the rest of it's doubled that's bothering me it's okay it's fine i should probably spread out the ones that are doubled and like make sure to mix them up instead of having it like one side double and one side single. That would probably help keep it from looking as awkward, I think, maybe not. Those spaced apart, there we go. I'm loving all that purple. And then once this dianthus here opens up, that's just, oh, that's gonna be so pretty. I still have a whole bunch 
of spring annuals over here, those pansies and lobularias, violas, and I'm tempted to start squeezing more things in here, but I probably shouldn't, right? The problem is I just, I have an obsession with these particular pansies right here. The variety on these is the Midnight Matrix Glow. Don't know how you'll be able to see that. It is a darker color than everything else, but so pretty. I want to look out my window and see those. You know what? The more the merrier. It's fine. Just got to get some more color in there. This is one of the things that I love so much about working with annuals is that you have more play. You can just do a lot more of them because you don't have to worry as much about spacing. So you need to keep it in mind. If this were a summer arrangement, I would there would be nowhere near this many plants inside of this. So summer arrangements, they have a much longer growing season but all these cool plants cool weather loving plants they're not going to be able to hang out in a basket for anywhere near as long so i figure may as well stuff it full and have fun with it yeah there we go okay they don't really go with this but i don't care i think they're pretty and i just want to see them when i look out the window yeah i'm gonna get this back filled give it a watering and get it hung up it should be much lighter than the other one i would think the other one didn't feel that heavy yeah that's not bad at all i would be shocked if the hook couldn't handle that i mean way more when it's wet mm -hmm. we will see hey charlie how you doing you enjoying the view watching the nature channel what a lovely view it is having the basket hanging out here even more so having that window open and i can like actually smell this that looks terrible you can't even see it hi pumpkin how you doing? You so cute, you make it hard for me to stay focused. Anyways, there's a better look at all that. I went ahead, watered this in pretty heavily. I went through, gave it a reasonable soak, and then I let that drip out the bottom, and then I went through and gave it another good soak and let that drip out the bottom. The whole time watching the hook up top and nothing ever started to bend or move. So I think may have solved that problem. Not sure, but just I'm gonna be careful. I have so much paranoia since that other one flew off and that metal hook thing bent and went flying right in front of my face. I'm still going to have to be careful for a little while because I am paranoid. And it's still really heavy. It's not as heavy as the other one because it doesn't have anywhere near as much soil in it, but it's still up there. I was on the fence about this basket because I liked how the other one came down and went really far. You know, it's a little bit more deep than this one but I do like the way that the coconut fiber kind of billows out from in here. It has that like fun puffy nature to it. Ultimately, that's something that really, when you think about it, it doesn't really matter. I don't get too hung up over how my hanging baskets look if I have trailers in them because, well, ultimately, eventually, the goal is to not even be able to really see the basket. I want everything spilling over the edges. Whether or not that's going to happen with this one in any reasonable amount of time, who knows, right? Because I'm going to be replacing this with all summer plants probably around mid to late May, somewhere in there. Potentially early June. Uh, it just sort of depends on how well I'm able to get a hold of various plants. But I would say this isn't going to be up here in the spot for any more than maybe two months at the max. And I'll be, I, like I mentioned before, I'll be reusing the majority of the things that are in here. And the pansies, I will try and move them into a shadier spot and get them through to fall. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Getting them through the heat of summer, you just never really know how it's going to go. The dianthus will go back into the pollinator garden, more than likely. It's one of my favorites, it smells so nice. Don't know what happened here. I need to stand that back up, there we go. <laughs> it's still a little wonky, that's fine. This whole thing's just a mess. I'm going to try and do, like, try to kneel down on top of these mulch bags, see if I can reach over this. And as I did it, I became painfully aware that I'm in my 30s. <laughs> when did kneeling become so painful? <laughs> this, that's been sitting over there for a long time. I had lots of things, different pots and just random things over here to weight down the frost blankets that I had to use back in February. And this is the last one, so I need to do something with this. For right now, I'm going to put it right there. See, this is the tricolor sedum I mentioned in last week's vlog when I was at, where was I? Some place had a lot of succulents and I was tempted to buy some of this, but I was like, there's no reason to. I have some at home and I've been waiting to plant this poor plant up for uh, two years. It's time to get that done, right? I should do that. May as well make that a priority. I should move this mulch too. And there's some of Tucker's dog toys out here. I need to gather sad, but Toby doesn't really play with toys. I'm not gonna get rid of them because there are other dogs that come around. Buddy sometimes wants to get in the pool and play. Not that often, it's not that warm yet. Toby loves to swim, but he doesn't care as much about toys. And you know, there might be another dog coming in the future. I don't know yet. It hasn't been that long since losing the other one. My feelers are out at the rescues. These are still in good shape. 
So wash these off and put them away. These are Chinese fan palms. So the deal with those is, well, I mean, they're dead, <laughs> right? Or you can see it. These will, in zone six and seven, sometimes you can get them to die down to the ground and come back when it gets really warm outside. They don't usually start to show any life until around like June, at least here. I've never had them come up any sooner than like maybe like late May at the earliest. After just those multiple nights we had in the negatives, it just doesn't seem likely. So I may just pull these out, cut them back and uh, let them just sit in some three gallon pots and see what happens with them. Put them like over in somewhere on the patio where the pavement's nice and hot and just really toasty and see if that wakes them up. And if it doesn't, that's okay. I'm either going to end up putting a couple of sable miners in this spot. I think that would be better the scrub palms, sable miners. These over here, they're just fan palms. They don't usually grow a trunk. They just put up big fan-shaped leaves. And they're much more cold hardy than the Chinese fan palms, by far. I, here in zone six, the, those and then the needle palms are pretty much the only palms that are hardy to this zone. There are other palms you can play with and try with, but if they require a good amount of protection to get them through winter and if they require a ton of protection i don't really consider those to be hardy I mean, at least not hardy to my zone these you can get by not doing anything with them in winter once they've established themselves except for last winter last winter is a unique situation because this just or this winter i should say that was a lot more cold than i had expected or anybody expected having to deal with but yeah i think i've showed you guys before i have some needle palms up on the hill that weren't protected they did fine so it's just a matter of get them in the ground, get them established, and then you don't have to worry about those things so much. So uh, whole point here that, that I've never even made my point, I think I'm just gonna focus on doing some tidying, little things like this. I have these lights here that I need to wrap up and put away a pot that I don't even remember why it's sitting over here, but there was a reason at some point why that was, I think I was trying to protect something in there. I don't, don't know for sure. I was originally saying that I was going to come through here. I think I mentioned this last week and in this vlog that it was time to start pulling all this mulch back. The forecast changed and they're now predicting a few nights in the 30s. So it doesn't really make sense to pull the mulch back right now. I want to wait and see what's going to happen because it's in the like the extended forecast one night this week in the 30s and then another night next week. There's I don't want to pull this back and then have a frost come through and hurt the tender growth on the bananas. So just going to have to enjoy these big mulch piles a little bit longer. That's okay. Spring, there's plenty of things to do, mostly weeding and tidying. Like, look at this weed. I grew a good weed. Isn't that a nice one? It's so big and bulky, and it looks like it's even going to flower and make more little baby weeds. So I should go ahead and get that pulled up because I don't want that to go to flower and start spreading everywhere. There, that's done. Got two bananas coming out of this clump now, no three. And this crinum lily is waking up very nicely in here. That, I was worried about this. Oh, I didn't notice I was all zoomed in, my bad. I was more worried about that crinum lily than I even was the bananas. Cause I can get more baju bananas, no problem. They sell them everywhere. The crinums that are hardy into zone six, they're harder to come by. I have to do a lot of research and find nurseries that have them. And when you get them, they're not very big. So, I mean, this is a, Probably a seven-year-old clump right here. It's a pretty big one. It might be five or six, I'm not sure. But that just, it would have been more of a setback than the bananas. You know what I'm saying? I'm happy to see everything's good over here. The only thing I'm not seeing life from so far, the gingers and the cannas. And it's still really early, so that's nothing really to freak out about. At the very least, I should go get my snips and cut those Chinese fan palms back. That would make this area look a lot better and do something with this extra mulch. I don't need that over here either. In that pot, it would just, I think, be good to just, I'm just gonna put some stuff away. How productive I feel. That looks better. <laughs> Still have a pile of yard waste of all the trimmings sitting there, but quick and easy, a big improvement. I went to grab the shovel to dig up those Chinese fan palms and I remembered everything I had just said about it being in the 30s a couple of times. So it wouldn't, that wouldn't make sense to do that right now, would it? Almost got ahead of myself there. I have an ant trap I forgot to pick up. Yes, yeah, I already have a sable miner right there, a scrub palm. That's what I should really call them, a scrub palm. So I say sable miners, people who aren't familiar with the palms will have no idea what I'm talking about. These are just a couple of babies and uh, it would make more sense, like I was saying, I think to put those up here because they're more evergreen. Not gonna have to wait for them to come back like in June every year. And that's just when they start to regrow. They don't usually get to look very impressive until like August or September when they die back to the ground. And that's a, that's a lot of waiting. And I'd rather have something that's going to have more winter interest, right? So more big green leaves to look at during the winter time. 
I think that makes more sense. It's just gonna be a matter of can I get a hold of them? Who knows? I mean, I have had a lot of plants on order and my voice just cracked, pardon me. <laughs> I've had a lot of plants on order. Orders I placed back in, uh, what, November? Which should have been way ahead of all the others. They're out of stock, wow. Oh wow, the sky looks beautiful, doesn't it? If you're new here, just get used. I get really distracted by clouds. I love a beautiful sky. But yeah, like I was saying, I think those would make more sense over here, those scrub palms. I'm gonna see if I can get a hold of two more, one there, one there, maybe a few more, because here's what I was thinking. When I planted these or had them planted last year, you know, I didn't really plant much of anything last year, but when those got put in and then the other two that I just showed you, the idea was to have those coming from right there and up and over and then dipping in here and then to have them on each side of this path. Probably one, two, and then one, two. The thing is, it is really cold over here. I know you wouldn't think it would make a huge difference, but this side of the garden, much warmer than this side. I've had a needle palm over here for, I don't know, I couldn't even tell you. It's been that long and it hasn't grown like at all. In fact, no, no spear pole. But I planted that as a seedling. I got that from uh, Plant Delights Nursery probably in 2014, maybe? Something like that. It's like seven years. Nothing. This is just, it's a really, really cold area. So if you remember when I planted the gingers and cannas, banana cannas over here, I was like, we'll see. It's kind of like rolling the dice. Hopefully having that pavement there and here and then it being more towards the edge will have helped kind of radiate some warmth and get those things to come back. But I don't know. But wouldn't that look nice when you come in this gate to have a couple of those big sable palms? They won't be big right away. It'll take a few years. They have those big fun fan palm leaves on each side of the walkways you come, especially with that dune grass in front of it. I think that would look really neat. So if that's going to be the plan, then I need um, six more. Uh, they're gonna be worth it? I think so, they're pretty expensive. Like it might be cheaper to hop in the car and actually just drive down to a Southern state and do like a 10 or 12 hour road trip and pick them up from a nursery and bring them back up and to order them. Cause those were, these right here, just, you know, full disclosure, I wanna say these were about 65 each when you factor in shipping. And if I were to just go down to like Alabama and pick up from a nursery, they wouldn't be more than 20 bucks probably at the, like the max. But these were grown by someone up in Ohio and they've been through winter cold. So does that make it worth it? I don't know, because here's the thing. I thought maybe that that would be worth it because then they're already had been exposed to some cold. They know what they're going to have to deal with. But I also got those other two ones, the two other small ones. These little guys right here, these were from Plant Vine of all places. And I want to say they were like $35 a piece. So those other big ones, if you're not factoring in shipping, I think that they were $35 or $40 a piece also. But shipping was really expensive because they're bigger and heavier plants. These are tiny. They're tiny little babies. And uh, they made it through winter no problem at all. I did cover them when it got really cold, but I didn't cover them the same as I covered those other ones. Those other ones, if you remember, I put big like plastic bubbles over them and some lights, Christmas lights inside with them to help keep things nice and warm. These, I just threw some plastic pots over them and uh, they're fine. They're totally fine. So I'm gonna do some price digging and uh, I'm more of an instant gratification person though. And I like the size of those other ones a lot better but I don't know that it actually made a difference as far as her cold hardiness goes. I thought that it would, but it, I don't think it did. They're in different locations, so that is a harder thing to judge on though, right? My wheels are just spinning, just thinking out loud here. I'll get online and do some price searching and talk to my palm guy. I have a like a palm tree dealer and see if maybe he can hook me up with something because I don't, it's, I don't wanna at 60, I don't wanna spend $400 on those. That, that I won't do. I could just get two more of these big ones and then four more of these little ones. That might be an option. Uh, again, I don't, I don't know why this is happening. It's because I was gonna do all kinds of things out here with these mulch berms and then weather. So now I'm like, well, here we are. Just gonna be one of those vlogs where I just walk around and talk with absolutely no point. Just welcome to me rambling for who knows how long. Uh, someone's been digging in my plants and over here, something got in and chewed up a bunch of my caladium bulbs that I had in here. That sucks. I say someone. I know who is the squirrels. I know that it was them. I need to trim the stuff off the trunk of this. It would look so much better 
that's something I would like to get done. Do I have my, my trimmers out here? Yes, of course they are. Oh, I got a fuchsia. Forgot to mention that in last week's plant haul thing because there were, <laughs> there, were there were so many plants so it was hard to keep track. Yeah, it was fun, but things got, I'm not gonna say out of control, but it was within the vicinity of, hey, get it together. That, oh, that's gonna look so much better when I get all that pruned off. Yeah, do you wanna focus so we can see? There we go. That looks nice. It will look a lot better when I come in here and get through these various layers that are in there. I missed a few. Uh, these are really, really sharp, and this is definitely something that's more appropriate to do with gloves on. My hands are kind of cut up and torn up just from cutting a few of those off. The little leaves here, they have like the sharpness of like tiny little razor blades. If you've ever dealt with ornamental grass, it's kind of like that, except it's even more stiff and even more sharp. Not so much fun to play with, but I do I enjoy how that looks. And right now, it's okay. It's just rocking a different dew. Got some layers and some character. Nothing wrong with that. When it comes to winter survival for these rostratas, it is usually recommended to help leave those on because that helps protect the trunk from really harsh, cold wind. But I don't leave these outside when it's really, really cold, so that's not something I'm concerned about. It's just purely aesthetics. Didn't need to come off. I just, I prefer the way the trunk looks without those. This one kept running up behind me, rubbing on my legs. You ready for some food? Yeah. Oh, what's wrong? You're a good boy. He's so good, Toby. You're so good. It's okay. You want to get some food? Did anybody feed the dogs? That's what I thought. Okay. Really have anything left to do out here. So, I don't know, hopefully this was a good vlog. <laughs> Probably not, it's okay. I can't tell if it's misting right now or if I have like some kind of nerve damage. I swear I keep feeling something, but it just, it doesn't really look very misty up there. It looks beautiful, but not very misty. It's really neither here nor there. So back to the palms, planning out some garden stuff here together. Uh, I think that's already been established. I made a few calls and I was able to get two uh, of these scrub palms, the ones down here, in 10 gallon pots to go in this location. They should be anywhere from, I think they said 36 to 48 inches tall. So really nice big plants. I'm guessing they're gonna be on the smaller side because this particular place I ordered from, they do tend to exaggerate. They have some grand claims sometimes. So I try and minimize, but minimize my expectations, but they have great prices and good plants. So it's sort of just one of those things where I just know the person. It's not someone who I can really link you to. So I'm sorry about that. But uh, so instead of just like flooding my garden with a bunch of ones from eBay, which is nothing wrong with, I already did that over there. I'm going to just get two nice big ones to put right here. There's also the option of needle palms, which are fantastic, but they, they have the name needle palm for a reason. They're really spiky, really sticky. I don't want those in an area where I have to go in and access outlets and vents and those things and the way the sprinkler system is set up in here it kind of shoots up and over everything and with the needle palms i just really think that that would rot them out having a daily watering hit the crown of them the scrub palms the sable miners these ones over here they're swamp plants essentially they don't only grow in swamps but they are going to be much 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 more resilient when it comes to water getting on them and settling in. The needle palms, I mean, you see them in swampy areas too, but not anywhere near, not in areas that have anywhere near as much water as these do. And I, I just like the appearance better on these. They don't look like much yet. They still have some growing to do. In a few years, it'll just be nice big fan leaves that are over here that have kind of a grayish, bluish hint, hinge, hint, tint to them. There we go. It's getting late. It's hard to tell if the camera, because it makes things look lighter than it is, but it's like, 7.30ish right now, so my brain's kind of in wind-down mode. The reason I decided to just do those two was because, well, for one, uh, it was a good deal for two big 10-gallon sable miners. They aren't the fastest growing. They grow a lot faster than needle palms do. If you want a reference for the needle palms, those are back here. There's just some little ones. Yeah, not much to look at. Those grow like snails. They have fun foliage, though. It looks kind of like the Rapsis excelsa, like the lady palms. They're a, a U.S. native, not up here, not this far north, but like I said, their trunks are really spiky, like really big needles in those trunks. And I, did, I just, I don't know. I just think this is a better fit for what I'm doing. I already have the needle palms too, so it makes more sense to have other variety or to continue with the variety. 
And then I remembered with this area for this year, I was going to do some colocasias on each side here. Because if I were to do two more of those scrub palms down there, and then four of them right here, that's going to put me at having a dozen of them to protect should winter be um, really bad and throw curveballs like it did last year. I don't want to have to protect a dozen of those. That's too much. I don't want to do that. And they're hard enough to come by that eh, it just doesn't seem like a great idea to put them down there. So for this year, it'll be the Colocasias. I was going to do the Maui Gold. I had those planted back in the seeding area last year. I love them. They're really nice, shiny foliage. They're fun. They're pretty. I don't know when those palms are going to get here. Hopefully sometime in the next two weeks. And that'll look nice to get those in there. And I just, I'm excited about having more evergreen plants over here because these two sable scrub palms, they're tiny, but they'll grow. And then there'll be two more right here. So those will come up and over this like mounded area and then they'll come back and go through so there is continuity even if i don't have any planted all the way down there i think that that's still going to look plenty nice just as it is like that and that's it i was hoping to do more projecty stuff this week you know i wanted to work the garden beds but in a place of waiting out the weather again which is fine that's just spring nothing wrong with that everything that's out here should be fine with those temps in the 30s that shouldn't hurt any of these plants as long as there isn't any frost. I don't think there's going to be any frost, but you never know. Look at it. It's only been, I think, a day since I showed this before. These lacy leaves are starting to open up. They're so soft and delicate. I love this plant. It's so pretty. It looks so much better in person. And I just got some fun, exciting news. I have family coming in town. Family, the who, my sister who owns Buddy. She's coming in town to pick him up and take him home. He's been here for a while while they were moving and getting settled into their new place. So she will be here and be here for like a week, and uh, which is great because I have someone else to put to work out here with me. And I'm hoping that we can tackle this berm, which, oh gosh, it looks so pretty. Oh no, I'm having, I can't have second thoughts. I have like 200 impatience ready to go in the ground over here. Yeah, that does look fun though, doesn't it? But they come through and they're going to start going all the way up this hill. So it's not, I'm not getting rid of them. I'm just going to be moving a lot of them and letting them do their thing that direction. And then going to hopefully get this opened up and hopefully next week, depending on that forecast and get the impatience in the ground. It's kind of early, but I figure as long as the ground's warm enough, wouldn't you think they'd be just as safe, if not safer in the ground than just sitting on the patio and there's six packs where at nighttime, if it drops into the 30s, the roots are totally exposed to that and the temperatures are gonna change really quickly, whereas opposed to in the ground, it's going to hopefully be some protection, depending on how warm the ground is. I should find my soil thermometer and check that out. That's what I'll do before I make a decision as to when it's time to get that done. These are the soil thermometers. Different sizes here. I believe this is a four or a five inch and then a 12 inch. Sometimes the longer ones you find them sold as compost thermometers. They, they do the same thing. These are really nifty to have around uh, for people who are trying to kind of push the limits with what they're growing in their zone. So like I have a lot of zone seven plants in my zone six garden. These are another tool that I should have mentioned when I talked about microclimates that these can be nifty because you can go around and pinpoint different areas and like actually see what areas are warming up more quickly than others so for example if i were to come over here and put this in this bed this bed gets a good amount of afternoon sun and then it has that pavement right behind it i put that down there probably about i don't know six inches into the ground and then uh, have to be patient and wait because it's i don't use the digital ones i don't have anything against them just these seem to work just fine as they are and uh, basically when that needle stops moving, I know what the temperature is. And with this being a raised area, I know it's kind of hard to see, but it does berm up. That's all for drainage reasons. So things will drain away from the house and there's another drain back there that things drain into. The temperature does fluctuate in this area fairly quickly. So I know I checked this just a few days ago and it was about 69, 70 degrees. And uh, just a couple days later, it has cooled off quite a bit and it looks like it's sitting steady right around 60 which is okay that's actually really good to know because that means that it's safe to start planting most things into the ground now there are certain things that are like really tropical plants like the heliconias they like heat like they like things really warm so i don't know if i'd be sticking those in the ground but if it's something where i'm debating their winter or not winter but the surviving these cool nights that we have like I was saying just a moment ago with those impatience that it almost makes more sense to go ahead and just put them in the ground because their roots are going to be more protected. They're surrounded by 60 degree temperatures 
and it's not going to fluctuate. Temperatures won't fluctuate as much around those roots as they will if they're just sitting on my patio. And then should we have some really cold weather, then I can just throw a frost cloth over them, but the ground should remain fine. This time of year, there shouldn't be any issues. That forecast though, I just checked it again and it is getting really, really chilly. It might get down to 30, hopefully not. So I'll probably have to move some plants in next week, maybe throw some frost cloth on some things. And I can see this berm over here is more shaded, nowhere near as warm as the other spot. I mean, it's not that far off. But typically what I would do if I'm trying to like, really I'm on the fence about when to get things in the ground, I'll go through and I'll take different temperatures throughout a pretty good area to get an idea, get an average. It's not fully necessary to go to this length. Once you start to see a lot of your plants flushing out, usually you can say, okay, it's probably all right. You know what I mean? This is just what I do with things that are gonna be more tender and I'm on the fence about, but again, like you can usually look around and go, okay, well the ground's probably warm enough. This isn't the best indicator because it's a giant pile of mulch. So it's obviously gonna be warmer right there. Yeah, I just thought I should mention the soil thermometer and what I was talking about. I actually already edited this video and I'm inserting this into that because as I just mentioned with the family, I'm gonna have family in town. So I'm probably not gonna be filming much next week. So I did something I don't usually do when I filmed a week ahead. So next week's vlog I already gotten started and I think it's gonna be fun. It's a good thing that cars, folks. I'd be in even more trouble than I already am. Why do I want that? This is where things get really fun. Look at all these baskets. Stunning coleus. Look at all the little counties. This might be hard to resist. These are fun. <sighs> Come on now. These are gigantic. Don't need it, very much want. I also don't like to overdo it. I could have just said nothing and it would have made things less choppy and less confusing, but if the lighting's different, I feel like that's just awkward. I should just say, hey, I thought I should talk about this, so I'm inserting this into the middle of the video. What's the dog doing? Okay, back to whatever I was talking about. But it is definitely time to get in here and get these. Some of them dug up, well, all of them dug up, but some of them will be moved and some of them maybe I'll pot up and give away to friends, something like that. I don't know. Gotta wait and see what that forecast says. Wow, this has woken up an awful lot in the last few days. This is a limelight hydrangea that I did, I didn't cut it back. Shoot. I guess it's not too late as long as I do it like right now, but typically at panicle hydrangeas, you want to cut them back when these buds are just barely emerging from the wood on these. Oops. One might be kind of long and lanky looking this year. I hope everybody's doing well. What's going on in your gardens? Thanks for hanging out for the randomness. And it wasn't exciting as like plant shopping and all that stuff, but I think I was hoping to get more done. I mean, I'm happy with what I got done. It looks a lot better over there. Getting that palm tree in the ground is fun. And then figuring out what I wanted to do here with those sable palms, the scrub palms. Glad to have that checked off the list too. I need to come in and prune these dahlias. They've already bloomed themselves to exhaustion. I got to get that taken care of probably tomorrow. Want to wait any longer. Got to get those flowers off there if I wanted to keep on blooming and doing their things. But anyways, yeah, like I said, comment down below. Say hi. Love talking to everybody. Hope y'all are doing well. Having a great day and a great life and everything's just going beautifully for you. You know, usually I try and find a pretty leaf to zoom in for for that one. Instead, it's just, that uh, was just a bunch of blurry chaos. Hey, and my second dose kicks in next week, so maybe hit up a few more nurseries. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye bye. And this is why I don't like filming the videos far in advance because everything always gets all screwed up. It's been like, I don't know, four days since I thought I had wrapped this vlog up. The palm trees are here. I didn't, they, it's gonna be like, it's supposed to be about two weeks until they arrived and instead it was about four and a half days. Not that I'm complaining. It's great that they're here. Just when it comes to like continuity in the vlog, I felt like it would make the most sense if these actually got used in the same video where I was talking about them. That seems like fun, except I already finished the video. It's already <laughs> edited and exported and up on YouTube and everything, but that's all right. Not a big deal. Pop this open and have a look. Yeah, that's a nice big sable palm. Decent size, a tad on the stretch side, but that's all right. Oh, and he sent it in the pot. I love that. Box number two. Looking good. Pretend you didn't see all that. We'll go next week is going to be like all plant shopping and plant hauling. It's not going to be too cold to do anything outside.
for the most part. Get to see all that next week. And I still, there's, I'm not done with next week's video, but I did a lot. There they are. I'll go put them where they're supposed to go. At least get a better idea what's, what I'm dealing with here. What I've been talking about, I should say. There we go. That was worth it. Kind of. It just seemed fitting to make sure that this was included in this video. I guess I could have waited till next week and kick things off with them, but I don't know. I think it's fun since I spent all that time walking around talking about them, trying to figure out what to put here, and then figured it out, and then they got here very, very quickly. It only took a few days for these to get shipped out. They're nice and big, healthy looking sable miners, scrub palms. Obviously, they're going to look different when they're in the ground. I can't plant them yet, though, because like I mentioned, those Chinese hand palms, which I just just set these right on top of them. It's fine. All the growth above the ground is dead on those. It's just the roots that I'm trying to protect. And that forecast is still holding true. It's still saying that it's going to be pretty cool in the with lows around 30, potentially one night next week. So no reason to dig those up. The ground's warmer. So I'm going to leave them there for now. The sables right here, the scrub palms, they don't care at all. Hey, buddy. All right, bye, buddy. They're going to be fine with that kind of temperature, which is why I'm happy to be putting those there. I'm always talking about getting more evergreens in the garden, and I know y'all didn't think I was talking about boxwoods, did you? Well, I'm pleasantly surprised. Very surprised. I like how these look. Gonna like it even more when they're actually down there and sunk into the ground. I think these look good. And they'll put on a good amount of growth, too, once they're actually in the ground and rooted. And they should be pretty easy to plant, too, since the holes are already partially dug out there. This is exciting. It's gonna be slightly torturous to have to wait about a week and a half to two weeks to get them planted, but eh, that's all right. They're fun to look at. It's okay. Okay, now, now it's time to go. As always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. We're gonna do it all over again. Yeah, keep on growing. Bye, bye. Oh, I hadn't even taken into consideration. These are big enough can see them through the window. And I don't, that's not gonna be the case once they're in the ground. But it will be not too long. They'll grow, they'll get there. Toby, this was supposed to be over by now.